Every business has some interaction with customers or clients. And if you're not nurturing those relationships, then you're potentially missing out on growth for your business. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking through how you can use Airtable as a CRM. If that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I own Gap Consulting, a company that helps you to unlock the full potential of no-code tools. If you're a small business owner or a manager and you're looking for ways to improve your efficiency, you're in the right place. And before we start talking about using Airtable as a CRM, I do want to invite you to our upcoming webinar training. Once a week, I hop on a webinar and I teach people how to build automated processes and systems using Airtable and other tools so that you can reclaim your time. Personally, I save about 20 hours a week using automation. So if you would like to learn these skills yourself to reclaim some of your time as well, be sure to check out the webinar link below or just go to garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. All right, but enough about all that. Let's jump into my screen. We are gonna build a CRM from scratch using Airtable. I am inside of my Airtable account. Uh, if you are new to the tool in general, you will probably have not nearly as many databases here, but go ahead and add a base. Now, a lot of people ask me why I always start from scratch because 99% of the time when I'm building something in Airtable or when I'm trying to solve a problem with this tool, I'm building it myself. There are templates available to you that you can download or create copies of for yourself that other people have built. These templates work great and I don't mean to suggest that you shouldn't go there and explore these templates. But the reason that I start from scratch is simply because every business is unique, every problem is slightly different from one person to the next. And so the way that I build this is going to solve my problem and maybe not your problem. So learning how to build in Airtable is always a preferred skill than just copying someone else's template because it might be like trying to put a square peg into a round hole. If you build the template yourself or if you build the database yourself, you are going to be solving your exact problems in precisely the way that you do business. So let's start from scratch. And with that being said, everything that I build here today is just an example. So you can take these concepts and use them in your own business, but if they don't pertain, leave certain things out. Go ahead and name our database. I'm gonna call this CRM and go on from here. You see that when it starts out, I just have that one table. So I'm gonna create a client's table. Why? Well, every CRM, it stands for Customer Relationship Management. It's all about helping you nurture that relationship that you have with your clients and prospective clients. So of course, we're gonna to have to store some client data somewhere. So this is basically a people table. I'm gonna delete all of the fields that start here and I'm gonna start uh, from scratch. I'm going to have a first name. And this, by the way, I make sure that I use a single line text field here. Similarly, I'm gonna bring in a last name, also a text field. I'm gonna include an email field. So I call it email and I choose the email data type. And then uh, let's see what else. I'll bring a full name here as well. And this I'm gonna use a formula for. So I'm gonna actually combine multiple pieces here using a concatenate formula. It's kind of like stringing together multiple things. I'm gonna take the first name, include a space, and then bring in a last name. So if I were in my own database, for example, it would look like this. Gareth Pronovost is first name and last name, and then the full name is gonna, once Airtable catches up, be automatically filled out for us. So I'm gonna delete these other records, you know, bring in an email address for myself as well. And you can add a lot more stuff here. If you have addresses, if you have, uh, you know, uh, different onboarding documents for your clients, various things like that. You can add fields for that, but I'm keeping this simple. First name, last name, email address to get me going here. Next, I'm gonna assume that my business operates with some sort of uh, service-based business. So I'm gonna have some kind of projects that we offer to our clients, right? I'm gonna delete all of these fields, get rid of, again, the stuff that starts out here. And I'm gonna bring in a link to the clients because I'm never gonna do a project 
if it's not connected or not for a client. So here's where I build that linked relationship. I can name the field whatever I want, and then I have to go to link this field to my client's table. So just by clicking here, I can connect it properly to my clients. And every project is only going to be for one client. Now, if you do business to business instead of business to consumer, you know, B2B versus B2C, then you're gonna be including a company table here instead of connecting to the client's table. Again, this is one of those parts where, depending on your business, how your business is structured, you're gonna do it differently from how I'm doing it. But I'm assuming that we do business, like this is a B2C situation. I am, the project is for the client, the individual, not for a company per se. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect uh, to clients. And again, I'm turning off multiple records because every project only gets assigned one client. On the other hand, if we look at now the reciprocal of that relationship, clients is now connected to projects because we connected projects to clients. And I have to ask myself the same question from this side. Can a client connect to more than one project? Generally, the answer here is yes, because we're gonna see that a client may come back and do multiple uh, iterations of work with us, right? If we offer the service over and over again, it would be additional projects. So I'm gonna allow this to stay with multiple record linking here. All right, so how do we name our projects? Well, in some cases, you might just type in a project name. Project one, for example. In other cases, you might uh, name your projects based on who the project is for, like what the client is or who the client is and what the start date is, right? So we could write a formula for something like that. In this case, I'll just keep it with the name and I'm gonna connect to a client here. And let's go a little deeper. Uh, I can bring in a start date and I'll use a date field here. And most importantly, I'm gonna include some sort of a status. And for this, I'm gonna use a single select field type. I really like the single select field type because we get some more advanced functions that we can use with this. And we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna say uh, we have a upcoming project that moves then into onboarding stage, that moves into implementation stage, that then is complete. So let's imagine that those are the four different statuses or stages that a project moves through. Go ahead and create that field. And so we can set up various automations using this status field. So for example, when we have a project, let's say that is set for the 11th, we can build an automation that automatically says when today is the 11th, we're gonna update the status into onboarding. And maybe that then kicks off some new uh, automations as well, like sending onboarding documents, like a work agreement or an invoice or what have you. There's a lot of automation that we can leverage in the background of our CRM once we have it set up properly. All right, now we're also going to build tasks that relate to this project, right? So I'm gonna use yet another table for tasks and we might have templated tasks or we might just create ad hoc tasks depending on the project. Of course, if you have a more scalable business, it'll probably be templated. Uh, that your tasks are the same every time you do the project. And I've done a lot of videos in the past that show you how you can leverage automation to automatically create all of those tasks. But in this case, I'm going to assume that I'm going to be creating these tasks manually. Now again, a task is gonna be related to the project. So let's build a connection from tasks to projects here. And again, I'm gonna build a linked relationship each task is only gonna to connect to one project, so I will toggle off my multiple records here. But again, as soon as I build a linked relationship from one table to another, the opposite side of that relationship is also created. So my projects are now connected to my tasks. So can a project have multiple tasks? Of course. So I'm gonna leave this part toggled on. All right, now I'm gonna go into my tasks and bring in some tasks that are all for project one. Maybe I have task one, task two, and task three. All right, now I'm able to track this and I can include a due date on these tasks. Almost every task has a due date. So when does this thing need to, need to be completed by? To bring in some dates really quickly. And then also every task needs someone to be in charge of it. So I can use a collaborator field type here to assign different tasks to members of my team. 
Now I can only assign a task to somebody if I've shared the database with them. And you see that we get a couple of options. I can allow multiple collaborators to be added to a task. So essentially having multiple people in charge of the same task. And I can choose to notify people once they've been added. So I like these default settings for me, only one collaborator per task and notify people so that they know that they just got a new task that they have to complete. I'm gonna create that field. And of course, in this example, I've only shared this database with myself. So I'm the only person available here to be added. And when I get added, if I am not the one who's doing the adding, I will see a notification here in the upper right corner of my screen. Now, lastly, I'd like to also add a complete checkbox here. And that way, as I go through these tasks and complete my tasks, I can just mark them off. Now I can roll this data back into my project. So if I want to see how many tasks for my project have already been completed, well, I have that linked relationship. I know that I have three tasks, one of which is completed. So if I want to know overall how much of the project is done, I would say 33%. So how can we bring that in? Well, first, we're going to count the total projects. And we can use a count field type here. It's gonna look at our tasks and count the number of connections that we have. And so again, we have three different tasks that are connected here, so it counts three. Now, I can use a conditional count field. So completed tasks is what I'll call this field. And again, it will be a count field, except I'm going to count conditionally only those tasks that have been checked off. So if complete is checked, then I wanna count it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this field. And of course, we know only one of those boxes has been checked. And now I can look at project completion and I will write a formula for this. And it will just be simply the completed tasks divided by the total projects. Make sure I choose my formatting to output this as a percentage and I don't necessarily need decimals, so I will go with to the nearest integer and create that field. And the nice part about this is I don't need to have these other pieces floating out here. I don't need to look and see three projects, one project completed, 33%. I just need to know 33% at the project level, so it's really easy for me to then come back and hide those fields and you'll notice that that does not alter the way the formula works. The formula is still able to calculate just fine. So this now allows me to manage my clients, my projects, and my tasks all in one place so that I can make sure that nothing ever slips through the cracks. I hope you found this to be incredibly valuable. Please do know that the sky is the limit with this. Your own business processes are unique, as I said at the beginning, and so the way that you build your CRM is unique and specific to you. So roll your sleeves up, dig around in Airtable, and explore all the different ways that you can visualize your own data, and most importantly, automate and streamline your processes so that you become more efficient and can grow and scale your business. I hope you found this to be very valuable. If you wanna check out how I help people automate more of their time, don't miss the webinar that's coming up this week. Even if you can't attend live, I will send a replay to you, so don't miss it. Link is below in the description or visit garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. That's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what thoughts you have on this and I'll see you in the next one. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly, and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online courses and a group coaching program, and for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.